So here in this case, we started triaging the issue from the performance homepage. But in our day-to-day -day developer workflow, we likely don't want to just be triaging issues uh, and, and starting from scratch and going from there. We likely want to be alerted and then react accordingly. So let's go ahead and set up an alert for when our page load uh, goes beyond a certain threshold uh, and the, we will want to be alerted on Slack and let's actually do it only for our most uh, important logged in customers. So to start off with, let's once again go back to the performance homepage. Uh, I want to start off with uh, all my projects here and let's do transaction.op page load. And this is my web page right here. And directly from within here, you'll see create alert. Go ahead and click on that, which takes us over here where we can create a metric alert to alert us when things are outside of our defined norm. So first things is we're gonna define a rule condition uh, and we wanna narrow down on the specific types of transactions that we want to be alerted on. So already we have this pre-populated here, uh, the page load transaction and the specific page loads, but this happens to be the web page that we were looking at. Uh, and to establish context, I'm gonna make this a little bit more difficult for myself by only having this applied to logged in users. And you can see I queried that and uh, the, the graph refresh right here. And I also want this to only apply to my enterprise customers. So basically when my enterprise customers that are logged in have a page load that's beyond acceptable, I then wanna be notified. So here in this case, I'm looking at the count. So this just shows me the number of matching transactions here. But what we're actually interested in is a time-based metric. So let's say P95. So 95% of my requests should be below four seconds. And if they're not, we then wanna know about it and do something about it. So here I've selected P95. Our alert will be evaluated every minute, applied to all the different environments. And you can see here, it has spiked to almost six seconds. And down here is where we will be able to define those thresholds. So 4,000 seconds or 4, sorry, 4,000 milliseconds is what we talked about there. And then 1.2 seconds is when we'll say this will resolve. And you can see that this graph here was reflected accordingly to show the resolution and the trigger threshold. Lastly, we need to define where we wanna be alerted. So in this case, it's going to be Slack, and I want to be alerted in this Slack channel, as well as give this a name. So here we have page load for enterprise, for logged in enterprise customers, more than four seconds. So that's saved. You can see metric alert right here, and the corresponding alert and a summary of it right here. Here is our rule that we just configured. So we can see it's a metric alert right here in the name. Uh, and here is what it looks like once it has fired. So as uh, we did specified in the action, we wanted to be alerted on Slack. Clicking into this will take us into this alert view where we can see exactly what went on, why it was triggered, and kick off the remediation process here. We can even uh, go to get more details directly from here uh, to assist. So here I'm letting everyone know. You can then go to view the transaction summary and this is a familiar screen. Now that we've covered alerts, uh, the, the last subject is uh, querying the data that you're sending in to Sentry in, re in regards to transactions. So let's go ahead and pivot over to Discover. You may have been familiar with this in regards to error monitoring. So Discover is our query engine tool that allows you to slice and dice the data as well as create your own dashboards and really analyze any of the data that you're sending in into Sentry. The same is going to be true for transactions as well. So everything for the most part is indexed. You can go ahead and create any of your queries as such. And you'll also be able to do some basic arithmetic such as more than and less than so that you can find the relevant transactions and really drill down as you need. Let's go ahead and create a dashboard or query for our slow transactions. And we'll define this as a P95 more than a certain time amount. 
In addition to that, uh, we're going to want to know the total number of transactions as well as how many Unix users are responsible for those transactions as well. So let's go ahead and get started here. So first things, uh, let's define the data that we care about. I'm going to start simple here. So let's just start with transactions and we want to know the total number of transactions as well as how many unique users are associated to those transactions. So here we can see the data set has been queried. We have the results. Here's checkout uh, and our page load transaction that we've been toying around with. I'm going to go ahead and narrow down the data set here as well. Here now what we see is the transactions, the total number of them, how many unique users have been impacted, and we also want to list out the P95 and the app decks here. You can go ahead, drag and drop to just restructure however you like here. And here we go. So now what we have here are some metrics, P95 app decks, as well as the total count and unique users. I'm going to go ahead and filter accordingly. Let's say my definition of a slow request here is P95 more than three seconds. There we go. Now that we've honed in on this data, let's go ahead and analyze this further. So what we're seeing here is the total period and the count. So we're seeing the total number of transactions of this query here. Uh, what we're actually interested in is dividing this out. So let's go ahead and select top five areas. So this will color code this and uh, we're still looking at the count so we can get the entire breakdown here. And this makes sense as they're the same as the front end requesting out to the back end in all of these cases. And as we were discussing earlier, we're not interested in the count, but rather the P95. And now we can get a breakdown of the P95 times on this data set that we've honed in on. If we want to pivot on this data further, we can go ahead and add anything to filter from within the table, as you might have seen me do earlier, or select any of these tags, which will then refresh the data set accordingly. So for example, to stick to my earlier example, if I wanted to see the enterprise specific stuff, I can go ahead and click that as well. Let's go ahead and now save this data set or dashboard so we can access it next time we want to know P95s that are more than three seconds that uh, are important to us. So here, go ahead and click Save As. I'm going to say transactions with P95 more than three seconds. And we can go ahead and save that as well for easy access. So that covers our introduction into performance monitoring. We started off with showing how this integrates within the SDK uh, and then showcasing how the data makes it up to Sentry, uh, looking at these transactions from the performance homepage, the summary details page, all the way into the transaction details page, finding the slowdowns, drilling down into the appropriate spans. Then we covered alerts and how we're able to set those so that we're programmatically uh, notified when things are outside of the normal baseline. And lastly, we just covered Discover, where we can query any of the data uh, that we're sending into Sentry. So we can, we can uh, drill down on any of the transactions that we want, figure out what's out of line, and find correlations, as well as pin these queries for easy access uh, and sharing with the rest of the team.